From the Charles River Basin, between Cambridge and Boston, this is the Ivy League Digital Network. And today, it's our first look at both the Harvard men's heavyweight rowing team and the Harvard Ratcliffe women's heavyweight rowing team on the Ivy League Digital Network. Alongside Dave Peresky, former Crimson Rower, I'm Bill Spaulding. Glad to be with you. Dave, we're starting with our first varsity races. First the men, then the women. Harvard men taking on Brown in the Stein Cup. The Harvard women taking on Princeton and Cornell. Should be a fun day of racing, even with some somewhat difficult conditions. Yeah. Yeah, the conditions will be the part of the story this morning. It really windy out here, kind of 15-ish mile an hour headwind for the for the race. The first thousand meters are going to be really challenging. We just saw the some of the Radcliffe boats go off against Princeton, and a um, couple crabs. Pretty pretty nasty conditions out here. So it will be. It will be a challenge. Harvard enters this race on the men's side, ranked fourth nationally. This is the first race of the season for the Crimson after they had their race last week postponed. Brown is 0-2. They're ranked seventh in the country last week on this same course. A very close loss. They lost by about one seat, four-tenths of a second to Boston University. Let's run you through the lineups, and we'll start with Harvard. The coxswain for Harvard on this first varsity boat is Cole Durbin, a junior. Liam Corrigan, a sophomore, sits in the stroke seat. Sophomore Lars Lorsch is in seat seven. Senior Vincent Breit returns after a two-year hiatus. He rode for South Africa in Rio. He's in seat six. Senior James Johnston in seat five. Junior Alex Richards in seat four. Junior Sam Hardy in seat three. Sophomore Arthur Doyle in seat two. The bow is freshman David Ambler. Only one Harvard senior graduated from last year's first varsity boat. It's an experienced group uh, with a nice influx of talent bringing back Vincent Breed and also adding a really strong freshman in David Ambler. Yeah, these guys, these guys should be ready to go. They did have a tight race last week against GW, only winning by a couple seconds, which I think surprised everyone a little bit just because GW hasn't historically been a very very fast program um, so I'm sure that they'll be geared up and then you know as you mentioned with Brown and BU last week the Brown guys will be looking looking to change the story in the early part of their season they also lost to Yale the week before yeah yep. Brown's crew looks like this the coxswain is Benson Stevens the stroke is Rufus Biggs Jack Abiel is in seat seven seat six is Michael Kuehler seat five Alex Mikaselovich Andy Provost in seat four, Grant Bittler in seat three, Finn Meeks is in seat two, and Rich Caputo is the bow for the seventh-ranked Bears. Stein Cup on the line. Harvard has won the last six Stein Cups. Brown's last win came in 2011. Last season, Harvard finished fourth at the Eastern Sprints. Varsity eighth was fifth at last year's IRA National Champions when the JV boat for Harvard won the National Championship. Yep, that's right. Looks like we're trying to get alignment here. Um, we've got a couple coxswains' hands now down, so we should be ready to go here pretty soon. Alignment never easy with the wind like this here out on the Charles River Basin, but everybody lined up at the stake boats now. The white flag is up from the referee. Once you get about a thousand meters in and get out of the big wide open basin, it, it does settle down a bit. So it, it's just a matter of kind of gritting it out this first a thousand meters to put yourself in decent position heading into the back half of the race. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be really choppy. Um, it is really choppy. The waves are big enough where they'll be annoying for the oarsmen, and there should we should see some spray probably in the first couple strokes here, just because it's a real challenge to stay clean. We got. We still got one hand up. We got a flag up too. Now both hands have come down from the coxswains, and we're off. Harvard and Brown, first varsity boats racing for the Stein Cup. Both both crews really handling it well at the beginning. Very very clean. It's very impressive. Looks like Harvard's jumped out to a couple seat lead here already though moving really well. Yeah, and these conditions, a very impressive, quiet start for both sides. Not much over splash. Oh boy, Harvard's taking it early. Look at that. Gotta be at least three seats. Laying down the lumber out of the start. The Crimson in front of the Bears in a top ten matchup. Harvard fourth and Brown seventh. Oh yeah, they're ripping it early. This is really good. This is a great start. Great start for Harvard. Brown guys staying pretty long though. But the headwind, as you can see, it's making it really hard to get into the water. So the brown guys, we can see their blades best, but, but they're starting to sky a little bit. It's hard with the headwind and the waves to, to row cleanly. 
looks like Harvard's out to probably four or five seats right now, and they're they're moving. They're really bringing it early. Cox and Cole Durbin counting out the strokes for Harvard. Again, this boat includes a couple of seniors, James Johnston and Vincent Breit, both out of South Africa. Vince Breit back in the boat for the first time in three seasons after he left to train with the South African team and eventually compete in the Olympics. It's now at least a six-seat lead for uh, yeah. Harvard. Yeah, they just got to stay clean. You can see the, the four-seat there slapping the water a little from Harvard. 500 meters in, a great start for the Crimson. Through the choppiest part of the course, it will get more and more settled as we go and get closer to the finish line. Yeah, I got Harvard around 36, 37. Uh, they've got eight. Uh, they might have open already. Yeah, this is a great start. Yeah, right on the line of open water at this point and looking to continue to stretch that lead. Harvard has the open water here against seventh ranked Brown in the first race of the day between Harvard and Brown, starting with first varsity today. Yeah, they're pumping them early. This is really good to see. This is really good to see. Going in ascending order today on the men's side, so second varsity will be next. Stein Cup will be determined within the next 1,300 meters, and right now it's all Harvard open water lead over Brown. Yeah, you can see they were upset about the GW race last week. The story of the race last week was they got up a length and just sat and couldn't end them. They're looking to end Brown early here. And we've got half a length probably coming on of open, and they're they're going for more. Has this been consistent stroke rate for Harvard, or did they put in an early move? Or, or do you think right now they still have something in the tank for more down the stretch? Uh, it, it just looked like a really aggressive start to me. And the state, it didn't look like they are particularly high, just throwing long and clean. and. You can see the gap. The gap's getting pretty big right now. And if you're Brown, got to be demoralizing to, to fall behind this big this early. Yeah, and you see Brown tightening it up. Wow, they're rowing a little shorter, trying to trying to do whatever they can to get back in the race. But it's it, it's it's pretty much over already. Midway point, and Harford has open water and more heading underneath the bridge inside the final 1,000 meters. Yeah, I, at this point for Brown to come back, we're going to need to see a, a pretty devastating crab from Harvard or something like that. And that's maybe the most impressive thing with how choppy the water's been. Harvard has been so clean so far. Very little water coming up in the strokes. Yeah, and we're starting to move through the comparatively better <laughs> section of the course, but this is this is a pretty, pretty big win. It'd be great to see him push it out even further here because um, the Brown guys have lost all sight of the Harvard crew. They have no idea where they are in the race. And it does look like Harvard's taking a move here through the bridge. This is but this is a pretty commanding lead at this point. Harvard was seven and one last season, moved to two and zero after beating GW last week. If they can hold on here against Brown, the Crimson have at least a length, maybe more, of open water between them and Brown. They took the lead within the first couple of strokes, and it's just grown consistently for the first 1,300 plus meters. Yeah, and Harvard, Harvard to me is look like they've rode longer and more in control. The Brown guys. They're working as hard as they can, but it just feels like we've got two different speeds right now between these two crews. Now, Brown was neck and neck with BU last week, lost by just a seat here. It's a whole lot bigger of a margin inside the final 500 meters. Harvard with 500 to go, leading Brown, and they've had open water since about 500 meters in. Yeah, uh, it, it's, this has been quite an impressive race wire to wire. It does look like Brown is hanging on though. They're, they're trying to keep this as tight as they can, but this this will be a good win for the Crimson as they think about next week and the week after that. The GW result probably was a little disheartening, so this is a real, real big win. Um, and know that they've also had a couple injuries in the boathouse, so getting full strength and posting a win like this will do do a lot of good things for the attitude in the boathouse. Well, send Harvard to 2-0 and, oh and be a great tempo setter for the rest of the crews coming up today. We have the Harvard Radcliffe women taking on Princeton and Cornell. That'll be our next race. But then we'll also have 2V through 5V on the men's side. We have 2V, 3V, and 4A and 4B coming on the women's side. We'll bring you the, the last 1,000 meters of each of the remaining races the rest of the way today on the Ivy League Digital Network. But Harvard starting with a phenomenal performance. This open water lead heading down the final 150 meters or so here on the Charles. Yeah, just absolutely gave it to them early here. Great, great start to the day. Nothing like beating Brown.
regional rivals inside the Ivy League. Harvard will move to 2-0 on the season. Brown will fall to 0-3. Crimson taking it home here with a wire-to-wire -wire victory, and it was never in doubt. No, never in doubt. Great to see. Yeah, the, the Brown guys are always really tough, uh, so this is a big early win. Here's a final couple of strokes, waiting for the flag to come up. And there's the flag. Harvard wins the Stein Cup for the seventh consecutive season. Got to be at least five, six seconds there. Open water victory for the Crimson in first varsity. The Stein Cup will stay with Harvard and stay in Cambridge. Up next, we'll have the women's first varsity race between the Harvard Radcliffe women and Princeton and Cornell. That's coming up next on the Ivy League Digital Network.